10,000 volts. This album was released, I guess, what, a day or two ago? Um, there it is. Kenny showing it up there. Um, his is his eighth studio album. Um, Kenny was actually Sam Ash Records in New York where Ace Freely was doing a signing. You see uh, some cool video that Kenny, uh, you know, uh, took and I posted there and Kenny posted and everyone's watching it. It's Ace, Ace coming out of his limo, right? Or his car, <laughs> yeah. his black car, his SUV. And then the fans are there. There's a lineup. Maybe you want to tell us about that experience there, uh, Kenny. Well, well, I've done this 10 years ago when he did Space Invader in the same spot. And and Johnny O, uh, his personal assistant, uh, John Astronomy, was very, he's very helpful. I went over to him first yesterday and I said, John, do you mind if I, uh, when Ace comes out, if I film? And he said, not at all. I said, well, you know, we're going to put it up, right? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. So he let me get right in the front. He was uh, very generous with his uh, time yesterday with me. And it was pretty cold. We were in the shadow of the Empire State Building. It's on 34th Street, uh, off right in back of Madison Square Garden. And it was pretty windy yesterday. People waited about six hours. He he did the right thing yesterday, though, Ace. He re, he he really did. It was well run. Sam Ash d does a good job there, but it was it, I, very well run. I gotta say, Ace's people are, are very good to good good to his fans. He stayed an extra two hours and signed for every everybody that waited on the line. It's a new Ace, isn't it? It's a new Ace. It's an Ace. You know what it is, Jimmy? Ace is in love, and it shows on this album. He's got uh, a new woman, and she straightened him out. My personal opinion, she straightened him out, and uh, it's good. you can hear it in the music. Half of it's an Ace album. Half of it's I'm in love. <laughs> All right, Perry Wilson. Never um, too late. Never, never too late. Too late. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with that. Hey, never Jimmy, one late. thing. Can, can Kenny show his, his uh, autograph album? So for me, Ace has one of the best signatures in rock and roll. And he doesn't just scribble his name. He always he draws a card. little Ace card. And like, yes, I, I have an Ace guitar pick from a show I was at a couple of years ago, and he has the same uh, signature on his guitar picks. It's really, really... So Ace puts some thought into his signature. I like that. Yeah, he All right, here's, here's the big question. So Ace went on record. I think it was... Oh, boy, I don't remember which particle it was. But he said, this new album... And he, he was hyping it up, right? I mean, he, it, it's it's it's... You know, he's not being that that serious about it. He's, he just said that, you know, this is going to make a, a Gene and Paul look like imbeciles once they hear the music on this album. I, I don't think he meant it in a mean-spirited way. He just meant it in a very marketing, you know, fashion, right? Do you think this album is going to make, I wouldn't say imbeciles, that's a tough word. I would say, do you think this sort of is going to, you know, I'll show you, Paul and Gene, that I can write great music. And you know what, this is better than what you guys and putting out in the past, you know, past two albums, I guess, were Kiss. So what do you think? Does this make Paul and Gene look bad musically? This is for me? This is for you. Yeah, uh, look, Kiss is Kiss, and it's this big monster machine. And Ace is Ace. And, you know, he's obviously a star, a rock star, but it's, he's not a part of that big machine anymore. So for me, it's two different things completely. And, you know... I don't think this album is going to make Kiss look bad. I think it's this album, though, makes Ace look good. And I think that's what it should. Like, let's forget Kiss. You know, yes, I know I know KK was in Judas Priest. I know Ace was in Kiss. I know, you know, Uli John Roth is in the Scorpions. But it doesn't always have to be this discussion. So, no, I, I don't think this makes Kiss look bad. Kiss just came off, like, you know, when they do the highest grossing tours of the year, it'll be one of the highest grossing tours. And, you know will have opinions about the, the quality of the show. But you know, we're not talking about tours and quality of tour here. We're talking about music output. We're talking about Sonic Boom, Monster versus this album. Well, but how old are Sonic Boom and Monster? I mean, those are, those are, those are a lot. Look, if, oh, if yeah. Kiss put out an album today, I think they could put out an album on a par with what Ace just did. So I, I right. don't think he makes Kiss look bad, but I do think this is a good record. Stefan, what did you enjoy about this new album by ace i a couple of weeks ago if you recall i gave a terrible review to this uh, the second single i thought it was generic underproduced rock and now that i listen to the whole thing from the beginning to the end with my headphones full volume taking notes i thought okay i was wrong the single does not reflect the album. And as a whole, I think it's an excellent record. Now, 
let's open a parenthesis here. Uh, I'm not going to surprise Jimmy and Parrot by telling you that if Kiss has never really done it for me. I've never been a Kiss fan. I liked a few of their albums, uh, the live ones, the classics. I've seen them a few times at concert, but it's not my band. When I was 13 years old, people were into Kiss. I was into Van Halen. And so it's never, I don't have this mythical persona in my head when I think it's freely. So when I listened to this, I had the privilege of listening to it as a rock fan, metal fan, music fan, not a KISS fan. And based on that, I find that the record, damn it, stands on its own extremely well for, for a guy who's that old and that messed up by life. Uh, I don't know KISS's uh, later albums that much. For me, I can't, I'm not sure I ever listened to something after Revenge, but uh, the fact is, it's, it's a great record. It's one of those records that if you still had rock or hard rock radio stations, I'd be calling in and say, hey, can you play that song again? I really liked it. You know, I I find that it's it's solid. It is solid. It has shelf life. But unfortunately, we're in 2024, and Kiss Fanatics uh, are the ones who will be interested in this record first and foremost. But even among people who love Kiss, they love Kiss. They don't necessarily care about side projects. So the impact, I don't know, but I have no, I, no problem believing that people stood out a record store for six hours yesterday, uh, I am not surprised at all because when you worship an artist and an artist gives back the way uh, he seems to be doing, more power to him. And I'm glad I discovered his album without being a Kiss fan. I, I, I'm going to say this before I ask Kenny. On the internet, this album has exploded with reviews and it's been very polarizing, I find. People love it to death and then there's some people oh i don't really dig it too much and oh this is this is just i don't understand what people expect from kiss and ace they've always been a hard rock melodic band and, and i've said this in my review and i'm not going to get into it here because you could watch the review i gave on this already but all of his past albums have been more guitar driven this is more melody driven the focus has been melody and that's why fans are lining up uh, at the record store. That's why people are excited. That's why he's getting such great reviews because every song has like a strong melody that I would say eight out of the 11 songs could be played on the radio easily, easily. Singles. Kenny, what do you think? I, I think you're right. I think you got a lot of singles on there and I think it has a lot to do with this guy right here, Steve Brown. That's right. Steve Brown wrote almost, wrote with him almost every track on here except yeah. for what, uh, they have one cover, Life of a Stranger. That's right. Uh, other than that, Steve Brown's name and, and guitar work is all over this album. Steve Steve really did a great job with it, and I think it comes from Tokyo Motor Fist opening up for them a couple of years ago. He uh, did a run with Ace Freely on the East Coast, and yeah. I think they might have met, and Ace might have been watching him play every night. because. Uh, would, you, would you say this is stronger than Ace's last few albums? Definitely. It just goes back to Space, Space Invader was strong. Spaceman was, it was, they were good. They were good. But Anomaly, that was a really good, very strong album, I thought. Yeah, that's the comparison for me. That's what well, I think. I well, okay, so let, let's go back. I mean, uh, the solid album. It's, like, I think it's, it's, it's obvious 1978 Ace Freely solo album is regarded as probably <clears throat> his best work, right? Well, he was my favorite. Even amongst Kiss fans, especially in the solo album sort of era that there was, everybody says that's his top. Then there's Freely's Comet. Perrin, would you compare this to Freely's Comet at that level? Yeah, look, I think this is his best release since Trouble Walking from Freely's Comet, and before that, since the Freely's Comet debut. I didn't love Second Sighting. I think that was a misstep. But Trouble Walking from Ace Freely and 
uh, the debut from Freely's Comet were good records. And I, I want to say the parallel here, and it touches on Steve Brown, in that phase of Ace's career, the Freely's Comet, Ace was working with great people. He was working with the late John Reagan, rest in peace, fantastic musician. He was working with Todd Haworth, another great musician, and Anton Figg, who everyone knows, a great drummer from uh, the, the David Letterman show and, and just amazing yeah. session player. And, if, and bring it here, people might not know Steve Brown or might be like, oh, the guy in Trickster. Steve Brown, yes, was in Trickster and wrote a lot of the hooks, and that band did have some hooks. Steve Brown is the kind of ace in the hole for Def Leppard. When Vivian Campbell Got had it. cancer, Steve Brown filled in. And when Phil Collins uh, had to go away for a little bit, his uh, wife was having a baby, uh, having some complications, he also filled in for Phil Collins. So he's Def Leppard's ace in the hole. And uh, he does a lot of other things as well. He's a very, very talented guy. So I think Ace is one of those people that when he surrounds himself with good people, good things come out of him. And I think this is another example of that. So, yeah, I, I think I think this is a notch better than Anomaly. I think it's his best album since 1989's Trouble Walking. So to say that a, a man and that in was his early 70s on that one. Yeah, has put out his best record in 35 years, yeah, you know, good good for him. I just didn't like the hype machine that was going nuts with, oh, it's his best, even better than the 1978 solo album. But there was one blogger who we all know well, in particular. I, I don't know. I don't was, think anybody's really stated better. No, than there was one person who I won't name that we all know who kind of just totally goes overboard with a lot of things, who was like <laughs> saying, comparing it to the 1978 record. And let's, let's just not go there. Let's not go there. But you know what? If we want to forget 1978 and put it with other things in Ace's career, it's with the best things that Ace has ever done as a solo artist. There's there's All 1978 right. solo album, then there's Freely's Comet, Trouble Walking, and this, and, and then there's like Anomaly and, and some other things as well. I, I didn't love his last couple records. I thought, you know, again, I don't know if he was surrounded by the best people. I think they were done a little on the cheap. But again, you surround yourself by good people. They bring good things out of you. Maybe you're motivated by the love of your life, whatever it might be. And there's Seems some... There's some good hooky earworms here. And and let me say, that second single, uh, Walking on the Moon, was a big mistake because that really turned me off to the record and a lot of people. And then the third one came out, Cherry Medicine. What an earworm. What a hook in that song. And then what I like about this album, uh, like you said, Jimmy, there's a lot of hooks on this record. There's a lot of songs that are going to make you be like, yeah, Tap your feet, shake your head, three minutes long. And, and, and at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. Because even prog rock songs, if there's no hook, even if, you know, hard rock songs or metal songs, if there's no hook, there's no melody, people yeah. tend to not really care. You know, who, um, Stefan, were there any parts of this album you said, you know what, I'm not digging that song or this guitar work or anything about the album that you kind of were not crazy about? No, I, I felt that it held up pretty well from the beginning to the end. I will say that, you know, and, and it's a problem we've discussed before. And before the CD and streaming revolution, an album was two sides of mostly great music. And as artists figure, oh, CDs, you can push 74 minutes of music, so they start adding crap and leftovers. <laughs> and when you're doing a streaming album, then you put everything, and I find that too many artists do not know how to do a final cut, a final edit, to stick to the best songs so when i was listening to it and you know after life of a stranger i thought okay this album is getting a bit long okay some songs are starting to sound the same you know it felt like there was a i didn't write them down because i'm in a car now but there were a couple of fillers i could have done without and you know artists should really learn to stick it under 60 minutes. Other than that, you always, always take the chance of adding fillers or, you know, tracks that are not up to par and you put them there and unconsciously it 
brings down the rest. Well, I, know? I, think, I think to your point is a lot of bands go, you know, we'll throw a couple extra ones because people like a few extra songs, but those tend to be weaker songs and bring down the whole rating of the album. Exactly. So, exactly. so more, so more is not better. Sometimes less is more, right? Um, Kenny, a few songs that yeah. you really loved off this album. Oh, uh, you want to go back to Freely's comment, "Fighting for Life," and "Up in the Sky." They could have, they could have been right off that first album. They, they, they reminded me of something he did with Freely's comment. But ten thousand volts, like you guys were saying, it's stuck in my head. And cherry, cherry medicine. Those are stuck in. Once you hear them, and that's how I go by it. I've been singing 10,000 volts for about a week now. So it does get stuck in your head. And when I prep for this, and then it doesn't help standing in the record store yesterday and hearing it, you know, 15 times, but the whole album as a whole, I, I liked it. It blinded. Definitely. There's a lot of ACE on here. And then again, there's a lot of Steve Brown on it. You could see the bolts. You could see where Steve's influence is on this album, but um, I like it. I, I mean, one song I would have probably left off, like Stefan said, it was a little, was maybe cut it down to 10 songs and take like Constantly Cute off. I think that that's was, a consensus on Constantly Cute. It was yeah, a little, I just, it was guys, a little, I, I like too, it. Okay. I well, like it's okay. It. It's all right. Guys, it's, I, like, I don't hate it. it. It's just, I love it, 80s hair metal. I love 80s I hair metal. I do too. I do too. Na, yeah. na, na, na. And I have to say, that song, okay, I know it's not the most, uh, you know, it's not Tales of Brave Ulysses or anything like that. It's I, know, like, you know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, you know, but the, again, there's kind of a, a hook and a cadence in that song. There is, there that is. Song, and I'm sure after I listen to the album. Guys, like, guys it, like Jimmy, your me. word, it's snappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind Look, Stratos really Stratosphere don't. is a great little instrumental. Could have been a Stratosphere film reminds story. me of Fractured. And, uh, yes, I, I said the same well, thing. Well, Fractured like, Mirror no. Part 20, right? No, yeah, I, I, yeah <laughs> but that's so ace. But now he's I, in the Stratosphere. So. The, the, the sound of Fractured Mirror is like so uh, trademark ace. I want a little throwback to that on every record just a little you do piece. need that a little instrumental from him Look, he's, got his, he's got his he's got his he's got his space he's got his electricity he's got his girls it's got a little bit of everything we got a little, little, little oh, yeah. it's arena rock that's what it is because if you put on a song like cosmic heart that's an arena rock song yeah, he's, he's gonna he's gonna do good with these songs live jimmy he's gonna i hope Look, he plays them live i i count it i love eight to nine songs in this album and then maybe one or two i could do without but they weren't like to your point Aaron, they weren't the worst out songs no. i'm just saying there's a hierarchy of the best and then not so good you know i think the so, album so. gets better as it goes along too like i'm i was on the fence about ten thousand volts i didn't like walking on the moon and i just felt from cherry medicine the fourth song onward the album just built and built and built so i, I just so felt good. like you know you know i'm glad i stuck with it you know because it really took the third single on the album to really get me interested and uh Again, like, like I, I don't completely believe the hype, but I, it's a solid, solid record. And like to Kenny said about being on the road, he needs to surround himself by a good band. He has to because the last time I saw Ace live was about five years ago, and his band was Richie Scarlet, Chris Wise, and Scott Cogan, who some people might know has been in a lot of different bands. Scott's and, back with them, and they were great. Stephane, and they were Stephane, so we lost good. your video. We're back on CTV News here. Yeah. No, it won't be long. I'm just uh, <laughs> okay. All right. right. And then because though, Ace, then Ace, there was talk of really spotty performances because he kind of cheaped out on the band a little bit, and there were no A-list. Well, he, he hired Jeans Band. He yeah. fired everybody and hired Jeans Band. Yeah. And then he then he got going again. He got Matt Starr, and he got some different people playing. So just take it on the road. Have a Cracker Jack band, and I think that's going to be key because this album could have some legs could have some legs if uh, the touring cycle and just everything is and the management and everything's done right. Guys, I will say as a, as an end note here, I would say this is the surprise album of the year. I think uh, so. It, it came out of nowhere. And you know what? I, I personally don't think he's making them look like imbeciles, but he's raising the bar in terms of quality oh, of yeah. hooky. Qual Cause the last two kiss albums, I couldn't even remember. Except Jimmy, I what, think he's yeah, saying, yeah. look, uh, you don't have to retire. Look what I'm doing. I'm still yeah. putting stuff out. I think that's what he's saying to them. They're not imbeciles, but look at this. One of the best things I put out ever. And boom, I just put it out. Yeah, agreed. I think it's agreed. a little slap in their face that you guys could have still been putting music out. Or they could have even asked him to be on, you know, the farewell tour. They should have. Been, I was at the garden. They should have had him, Peter, Bruce Kulik. They should have been there. Yeah. Not but saying I think, Vincent, I, I but think, the other you know, guys I'm, should have been there. 
as a huge Ace fan my whole life, I'm really happy to see that if it, this is, in fact, his last album, man, he's going out with a bang. Not. I hope not either, but if it is, it's, he's going out with a bang. And I'm, I'm really, I, I, I want to hear this album. I put this, like, you know what I mean? You Some some albums you don't want to hear over and over again, but this one, I want to, I keep going back to what I keep, the melodies are stuck in my head, 10,000 volts. And I don't know. I love everything about this album. I think it's really good. Me too. Me too. Guys, I, I would. I just want to see him live again. I honestly wish he would go back get Richie Scarlett live again. They really worked well live, but that's their decision. That's my personal choice, but I, I just want to see him live again. I'm going to have a couple of chances to see him live coming up in the next couple of months. I'll come right. back to you with that. Guys, any last word there, Stefan, you want to say? I wish I lived in New York. You guys see any show that hits the road. It doesn't well, I'll tell you right now, it. Stefan, we'll get in the guest room ready. You guys are always welcome. Careful, because they snore. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> so to wake each other up. On that note, everybody, have yourself a wonderful Have a good Sunday, night. everybody. All right, everybody, thank you for everything. Nice chatting, for everybody. Take care, everybody. Take care.